In this video I will show you how to set up and use Estelcam's USB CNC controller. This part of the program is free, so you can use it without buying a license. Estelcam requires an original Arduino Uno as motion controller. If you buy a new one, keep in mind that some clones and fakes are not compatible. So if you want to be on the safe side, get one from an official source. Driver installation. If you have already used your Arduino before, you can skip this step. Otherwise you may need to install a driver depending on your Windows version. You will find lots of step by step guides on the internet, so I will skip this. After driver installation, your Arduino should appear as COM port in the second list from above. Pin layout. Estelcam supports different pin layouts. If you use a stepper shield, the Gripple compatible layout is usually the right one. But be careful. If you for example have a closed switch on one of the output pins, your Arduino will be destroyed. So disconnect anything except the motor drivers until everything works as expected. Steps per revolution. This value depends on the stepper drivers you use. Typical values are 400, 800, 1600 and so on. If your driver offers to select a value, set it to 1600. Distance per revolution. This is the distance the axis travels for each stepper motor turn. In most cases the value is equal to thread pitch. And for bell driven machines, it is belt pitch multiplied by the pulley's tooth number. Maximum feed rate. This is the highest speed your axis is able to move. Start with conservative values. At the moment we just want to get a machine running. We will later optimize the setting. Acceleration distance. Start with a value equal to one revolution of the X or epsilon axis. Again, we will optimize this later. Finally, click the program Arduino button. Estelcam will now update the Arduino with the required firmware and configuration. If you change any of the above settings, you need to press this button again. Once the upload is finished, the CNC control window appears. Test each axis by clicking the corresponding arrows. If an axis happens to move in the wrong direction, check its reverse direction box. Now let's improve the speed and acceleration settings. Both properties work against each other, so more of one means less of the other. Our goal is to find a reasonable compromise and use the machine's capabilities as good as possible. Let's first see how far we can increase maximum feed rates while keeping acceleration distance constant. Increase the maximum feed rate values for each axis. Apply the change by pressing the program Arduino button and see what happens. If everything works fine, increase the values further and repeat. If an axis stalls, go back to the last working value and note it. Do this until you have the maximum values for each axis. Now let's change the acceleration distance to for example half its previous value. Acceleration will now be faster, but you will most likely not be able to reach the same maximum feed rates as before. Again write down the maximum feed rates for each axis and repeat this test with different acceleration distance settings. Our goal is to create an acceleration distance versus maximum feed rate diagram like this one. Here you can see how different acceleration settings influence your machine's maximum feed rates. Select the point with high feed rate, but don't let acceleration distance become too large. Here are two examples with the same speed, but first with 10 mm acceleration distance and then with just one. Now enter the chosen acceleration distance, but decrease the corresponding feed rates by a 20 to 30% safety margin. If you set feed rates to the absolute limits, your machine will be unreliable. Now let's have a look at the inertia fields. If you run a CNC program, you will notice that the machine decelerates before some, but not all direction changes to prevent step losses. This happens especially in sharp corners and is indicated by small gray dots in the preview. The inertia fields basically tell Estelcam how powerful your drive components are 
and whether a certain direction change at a certain speed requires to decelerate first. So, if you experience step losses during CNC program runs, you need to increase the inertia value of the axis that lost steps. If everything works fine and you want more fluent program runs, decrease the value. Be careful. If your CNC program runs close to the machine's maximum feed rates, a lot of decelerations will happen because your motors have very little torch left for direction changes. By decreasing the feed rate, program execution will be much more fluent and usually even finishes way before programs with unreasonably high feed rates. One way to move the machine is to use the blue arrows. Each arrow has three sections for three different speeds. Slow at the beginning, medium at the center and fast at the tip. To move the machine with your keyboard, you first need to enable keyboard control by clicking the keyboard button. You can check and change the keyboard layout in the settings tab. Again there are three speeds. If you just press a direction key alone, the machine will move slowly. Simultaneously pressing the shift key accelerates to medium speed and control key to maximum speed. Using a Xbox gamepad is the most convenient way to control your machine. You need to enable it in the settings tab, but make sure to install Microsoft XNA Framework 4 first. Otherwise Aslcam will crash. Joysticks and triggers work together to control speed. If no trigger is pressed, the speed range for the joystick is small to allow precise adjustments. But once one of the triggers is fully pressed, the joystick has full speed range from zero to maximum speed. CNC machining. You can open NC files created either by Aslcam itself or any other compatible CAM program. After this a toolpass preview appears in the main window. The light blue cross indicates the CNC programs X, Epsilon and Z origin. Now you have loaded a CNC program, but as your machine has no eyes, it doesn't know where your workpiece actually is. You first have to tell it. So let's say, like in this example, your X and Epsilon origin is at the part's lower left corner. Now we first need to move the machine manually to this position and set X and Epsilon coordinates to zero. You can do this either by typing in zero or use the according zero button. Same with Z. If Z zero is on top of the workpiece, lower the tool until it just scratches the surface and then set Z to zero. Now your machine knows where it is and you can start the CNC program by clicking the play button. Aslcam automatically stops each time a tool change is required. After this you can move the machine manually to whatever position you prefer to change the tool. The new tool will most likely have a different length than the one before, so you need to touch offset again. But not X and Epsilon, they are not affected by a tool change. Finally just press the play button again. Aslcam will automatically return to the correct position and resume the CNC program. Finally, I'd like to show you the command line. You can use it for example to move the machine by a certain distance or to a specific position. Just have a look at the description that appears once you hover the mouse over it. One final tip. Buy some styrofoam. It is cheap, exceptionally well machinable and most important, it won't break your tools if something goes wrong.